Cancer is a very complicated disease, especially kidney cancer. So everybody needs to be engaged and everybody needs to be involved before we can actually make the best care for our patients. So when patients presented with symptoms, they normally get to see, get a, a study like CT scan. And that radiologists need to make a call. And they will send, if they found a kidney mass, they will go to see the urologist to cut it out. And when they cut it out, the pathologists need to evaluate to see what kind of kidney cancer this patient actually has. And if this patient develops metastatic disease, you will be taking care of medical oncologist and radiation oncologist. So there are so many people are involved. So it's a multidisciplinary approach. And if, if the patient gets treated with systemic treatment, then they'll have toxicity. And then you need to have specialists to deal with, especially dermatologists that we work with closely because the lots of the VEGF drugs causing a lot of the skin toxicity. So it's a multidisciplinary approach. And I think to move this field even further is to engage scientists like physician scientists like me. And actually what we can actually do, try to understand what's really going on in the disease and we can move the disease forward and we form a multidisciplinary team that way. Overall survival and quality of life have improved dramatically over the past decade for patients with metastatic renal cell carcinoma. The biggest incremental gains were during the first approvals of first-in-class agents serafinib and sunidinib, when they were compared to interferon, we saw more than a doubling in progression-free survival and what we believe to be a real doubling of overall survival. Since then, with the approval of several other agents, many of them in the same class, we have inched up overall survival um, even further. And at the same time, with the development of more targeted agents, been able to ameliorate some of the toxicity concerns um, which have allowed really an improved quality of life uh, for patients with the disease. So now with having nine available therapies for use in the United States, we sequentially will use those. Patients can uh, hope to get three to five times longer of an overall survival than what they could have when we were back in the previous cytokine era using agents like interferon. To put it another way, many of our patients can expect to live four to five years or longer with our current available therapies and enjoy a reasonable quality of life that will allow many of them to continue to work in their occupations that they had prior to their diagnoses. Our initial approach to treatment of metastatic renal cell carcinoma has evolved and changed over the years as new agents have become available and entered into our, our group of agents that we can choose from. However, unfortunately, our first line agents Sinidinib and Pazopinib have remained the staple for the past four to five years. I am here to report, and we're seeing this now at a major meeting such as ESMO in this year's ASCO, combination therapies are here to stay. And we may actually see as, as phase three trials are undertaken and mature, that we now supplant our single agent frontline agents with combination strategies. Um, so the first line setting has been stable but we expect changes as we move forward with combination strategies. In the second line setting and beyond, we've seen significant shifts. In our newest agents, there have been three in the past year, nivolumab, the combination of levatinib and everolimus, and cabozantinib, which have pushed the bar in the second line and refractory setting and have supplanted the previous use of agents in that space. The bar has been set high with these agents, and in order to push survival and quality of life even further, we need to start looking at innovative ways of administering the medications, potentially new targets, and also exploit potential combinations. Combination strategies in cancer therapy is not a new concept. We as cancer doctors and pharmacologists have wanted to combine agents with different mechanisms of action. For now, for the first time in kidney cancer, we now have several classes of agents with different mechanisms of action that don't necessarily have overlapping dose-limiting toxicities. Therefore, if we're able to combine these agents with different mechanisms of action, different dose-limiting toxicities, we may be able to push up the efficacy bar without compromising quality of life and toxicity endpoints. So strategies that are being employed now um, and we're seeing at ASCO 2017 are combining the, the proven VEGF targeted therapies, 
which are the current standard of care for the disease, with the newer agents such as the immuno-oncology drugs, nivolumab, pembrolizumab, ativolizumab, et cetera, um, in hopes that we can raise this bar without negating the benefits and quality of life that we've achieved so far.